this is the fifth and final passage in our God Is series. And today we're looking at the fact that God is to be praised. This is a wonderful psalm that brings out so many aspects of who God is and what he's done. And so I encourage you to take some time and read over this psalm a few times. Familiarize yourself with it. Notice the repetition, the types of words that David uses. And pray that God would help you to understand this wonderful part of his word. And pray that this will will result in you being somebody who increasingly lives for the praise of God's glory. I'm going to highlight some of what I've seen in this psalm. Um, Just one thing to note, these titles in the psalms are actually a part of the original. So a psalm of praise of David. So this is one of David's psalms. And this is actually the last of David's psalms that is recorded in the book of Psalms. And the psalm is topped and tailed with a call to praise. David is calling those who hear this psalm to praise the God who he knows. So all of this you'll see these different words of praise that top and tail the psalm. And then in the middle there's also a similar all your works praise you, your faithful people extol you. And David uses a whole lot of different words for praise in this section. Um, I will praise you, obviously being one key one. This word extol is actually the same Hebrew word um, that is translated praise other places in this psalm. Um, And extol here, that's actually the same word in the, the Hebrew. And then the third word that is used is this word, exalt. So what we see top and bottom of this psalm is that it is this call to praise. And it's a call of praise to the God that David knows. He says, my God. David knows God personally. He says, this is King David, but David calls God, my God, the king. So David realizes that although he is an earthly king, God is the ultimate king and he is the one who should be praised. And we see here, it says that your name be praised forever and ever. That is repeated um, beginning and end of the psalm. So that you can see that type of repetition just highlights the fact that um, they want, David wants you to notice the theme of the psalm. It is a forever and ever praise of God that David is after here. And the way that I dealt with the psalms, I broke it up from verse 3 to 13, halfway through verse 13. We see David is referring back to stories from Israel's history, stories that show God's greatness. So this section is looking at uh, stories from history and then these verses are from experience. David's own experience of God. So the story of God that is how it's impacted him personally. And some of the themes that we see, um, David speaks, great is the Lord, his greatness his great deeds, and great is the Lord. The Lord is the focus of the psalm. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Lord is good. The Lord is trustworthy. The Lord upholds. And throughout this section, particularly the first part, we see David uses storytelling words. So commend, tell, speak. Meditate, which then leads to telling, proclaiming, celebrating, joyfully singing, telling, speaking. And the thing that David is pointing to in this whole section are, uh, what is it that he's telling of? Well, he's telling of God's works, his greatness that no one can fathom, his mighty acts.
So the interesting thing that all of these types of words should spark is as David says, one generation commends your works to another, tell of your mighty acts. The moment those types of words are used is they should spark memories of God's mighty acts. And David knew these from history. Acts like Noah and the ark and Moses leading God's people out of, out of Egypt. Joshua leading the people into the promised land. The walls of Jericho falling down. All of these things, these wonderful works, these awesome works are showing God's abundant goodness and his righteousness. And this verse here, 8, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Uh, comes straight from Exodus 34. And so all of these words should spark in God's people a remembrance from history of what God has done, of who he is. And then as these great works and his glorious splendor, as these things are remembered and thought about, they need to be things that are told about, spoken about meditated on, proclaimed, celebrated, joyfully sung about. And the whole thrust of this psalm is that this God who David knows, my God, the King, is a God who needs to be told about. There are great stories about God that the world needs to know. And one of the big things we see here is that it says, one generation commends your works to another. And we see at the end of this section, all generations. So there's this generational passing on of the stories. When you're reading any part of scripture, it's worth looking out for um, words that kind of give you the theme, uh, reason words. And we get given one here in verse 12. So that, why should we tell, speak, meditate, all of these things about God's wonderful works? It's so that all people may know your mighty acts and your glorious splendor. King David, who knows God, my God. King David, who wants to praise God forever and ever. He wants other people so that all people may know God too, may know his mighty acts and the glorious splendor of his kingdom. There is a bit of this kingdom language in these, this little middle section of the psalm. David wants people to know the goodness of being a part of God's kingdom. And so as he writes these verses, he wants to spark ideas in his hearers' minds that remind them of stories from history that point to this great God whose greatness no one can fathom. Our minds will be stretched to their limits as we seek to know our great God. But not only does David know God from history, he also knows God from experience. And we get a sense of this in the next part of the psalm. One thing we see here is that David uses this word all a lot. In all he does, all he promises. Every, it's the same Hebrew word. Now, David can say this because of his own experience. He has experienced God's promises being fulfilled and that brought him to a, a place where he praised God as God fulfilled those promises he trusted that God is good that his awesome works are, are worth speaking about and rejoicing in David knew God's faithfulness David also had experienced that when people fall that it's God who lifts up the humble those who bow down David had experienced God's grace you think of the story of Bathsheba and Uriah and you read Psalm 51 that recounts David's processing of being rebuked after that event. David knew the wonder of being lifted up after he had fallen down. He 
He had experienced this. So when he says the Lord is gracious and compassionate, David knew this personally. David also knew that God will provide food at the proper time. Um, there's a story of David and his men going into the temple and eating the consecrated bread. Uh, God providing for him in that time of need while he was running away from Saul. So over and again, that's what David is doing in this section. He's rejoicing in God's faithfulness to him, his own experience personally. And verse 20 might seem like it doesn't fit with the rest of the psalm. As it said, the Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. It's kind of a, a new theme being brought in. But actually, this is a good thing. David has experienced all his wicked enemies being destroyed by God. Uh, the story that's so well known is obviously the story of David and Goliath, where the Lord watched over this young shepherd boy who went and destroyed wicked Goliath. And God is the hero of that story. And that's one of the big things to, to see in this section, is that God is the hero. It is God who saves. It's God who looks after his people. It's God who is faithful to his promises. And so God is the one who should be praised. The Lord watches over all who love him. And that is what David wants to see happen. His own experience has caused him to be somebody who will speak in praise of the Lord. And then he wants every creature to praise his holy name forever and ever. Now for us, this side of the cross, as we read this psalm, we have even more reason to praise God than David did. We have greater stories of God's mighty acts and glorious splendor. As we read the stories of Jesus, we see over and over again these miraculous deeds that God has done. And wonderfully, we know that the Lord is gracious and compassionate because we've seen this grace and compassion most wonderfully displayed in our Lord Jesus Christ's death on the cross for us. So that even for us as wicked people, we won't be destroyed because now as those who are under God's love because of Jesus, we know that he will watch over us. We have great stories to share. And just like David is wanting to spark these memories of great stories from history and stories from experience, and then he's saying he'll tell them and he wants every creature to be ending up telling the praise of God's holy name forever and ever, that should be the same for us. And actually, if you go all the way to Revelation 5 verse 13, we see right at the end of um, the Bible, every creature praising God's name because of Jesus. So what David prays for and sings about here, we see happening at the end of time. That is where history is headed. But we want to be among those who pass on from one generation this great story of our God so that people will be ready on that day to praise God's name forever. Another passage you could go to after this psalm is Ephesians 1, um, it's 1 to 15, where Paul just speaks about the fact, particularly verse 3, um, where Paul says that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. All of these wonderful deeds and God's grace and compassion, his goodness and love, all of those things have been showered on us in Christ, every spiritual blessing, so that we might be a people who live to the praise of God's glory. That is how we should be responding to God. As we come to know him, it should thrill our hearts, cause us to stand in awe of him, and result in an overflow of praise to him. And that's what Paul wants to see happen. And that's what we should want to see happen as we teach this to others. Let's be praying that they too will rejoice in our God who is the King. The King who came in grace and compassion to deal with our sin so that we can be a part of those who know Him and who will end up praising Him right now and into eternity. Well, God bless as you dig in further and as you teach this to others. Mm -hmm.